The Chicago Bears almost traded for pass rusher Matthew Judon. Does that mean the Bears are still looking to make moves? It has been a topic of conversation among Bears fans all offseason long. Adding another pass rusher to go opposite of Montez Sweat, the Bears were linked to Danielle Hunter and others during this year's free agency period, but chose to go the value route by signing Jacob Martin instead. In the NFL draft, we were connected to Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, and all of this year's top-tier pass rushers, but Ryan Poles chose to pair Caleb Williams with stud receiver Romo Dunze. But then on day three, Ryan Poles would address the defensive end position, trading back into the fifth round to take Austin Booker, who's been great so far and had two and a half sacks last week against the Bills. But there's still been rumors and connections to Unique Ngakwe and other free agents since the draft ended. But now multiple reports have surfaced claiming that Ryan Poles did offer the Patriots a third round pick for pass rusher Matthew Judon, a guy who was a 32-year-old pass rusher who only had four sacks last season, but he did have 15 the year before that. According to Albert Breer, both the Falcons and the Bears offered third round picks in next year's draft, and Judon had his choice of going to the Falcons or Bears, and he chose Atlanta? Hope you don't regret that decision, Matthew. But I've heard a lot of people on both sides of this news saying that Ryan Poles wouldn't offer a third round pick. It would be stupid to do so. And people on the other side saying that we missed out by not offering more for Matthew Judon. Today, I want to talk quickly about what this news means for the roster going forward. What is next for the Bears? And is Ryan Poles still looking to add another pass rusher? As well as my thoughts on the Matthew Judon trade, let's go ahead and get right into it. So first off, to clear the air, it does seem like Ryan Poles did offer a third round pick. Now, sometimes these sources can be wrong, but pretty much everyone in the media is reporting the Bears offered the Patriots a third round pick. I do not think that's crazy. I think a third rounder for a guy with 15 sack potential would have been a pretty sweet deal especially considering we still would have two second rounders and our own first next year, meaning we could easily recoup that third round pick by just trading down a few slots early on. However, Judon is 32 years old, and the biggest caveat of the entire thing comes down to what kind of contract is he going to sign. If he gets north of $100 million or anything close to what Montez Sweat got, then it would have been an awful deal if you ask me. However, if he signs a short-term extension, it could end up being a great deal and a big move for the Falcons. To me, it really comes down to the contract and the fact that both teams were able to negotiate with Judon before the trade tells me that Poles thought he was going to be able to get a value contract out of this move. And if not, it's a short-term rental just like he did with Keenan Allen. This also tells me that Ryan Poles might not be done with adding to the roster in 2024. Now, it doesn't mean he's just going to go out and sign someone just to do it, but like always, he will continue searching for different avenues to upgrade this roster and make the team better. And again, Poles seems to be eye to eye with the fan base here. What are the two positions that most of us have talked about all offseason? Defensive end and center. But defensive end has been a topic of discussion pretty much since I started this channel the day we traded away Khalil Mack. Montez Sweat has made the entire defense better. He is a force multiplier, but having another guy who can get after quarterbacks could unlock the potential of this defense even further and even help out Javon Dexter as well. Also, to the people who would have been mad about trading a third round pick, remember we still would have had three picks in the first two rounds. We have our own first and second round picks, as well as the Carolina Panthers second rounder, which is way better than a third round pick. So if another opportunity to upgrade this team presents itself, either during cut down periods this week or sometime before the trade deadline, Ryan Poles looks ready to strike. I love that he was involved in the Matthew Judon talks. Honestly, I didn't think we would be. But Ryan Poles is always one step ahead of me and everyone else. We have the right GM for the job, and he has my full trust. If he thought Matthew Judon for a third round pick would have been a good deal, sign me up. But unfortunately, Judon chose to go to the Falcons. I get it. The Falcons have a veteran quarterback. They have Kirk Cousins. We have a rookie quarterback. But if you're looking at both rosters on paper, I'm taking the Bears 100 out of 100 times. No disrespect to the Atlanta Falcons. 
But right now, as far as our pass rush goes, opposite of Montez Sweat, and then we have Javon Dexter on the inside. Right now at defensive end, we're going to be counting on a combination of Demarcus Walker, Austin Booker, Jacob Martin, and Dominique Robinson. I think Booker and D-Rob have looked really good so far in preseason and in training camp, but another guy that stood out has been Daniel Hardy. He's played really well, and I do think he has a chance to make this roster. Jacob Martin looked like one of the best players in the first week of camp, but he's been out for like three weeks now. Hopefully, he can return soon. If Jacob Martin's healthy, I think it really helps this defensive line. And then as far as Unique and Gakwe goes, he remains a free agent, but considering that Ryan Poles has passed on him for this long, the chances of him returning get lower and lower every day that passes. I also wanted to mention Hassan Reddick as well. He was traded to the New York Jets this offseason, and he's yet to reach a new deal with the team, and currently he's holding out. This is something that's being talked about a lot by the media, and that means that people want to speculate that he's getting traded too. I do not see Hassan Reddick being traded. I think eventually he's going to get a new deal from the New York Jets, and he will remain with the team long term. So let's just take a quick peek at our defensive line. We know that Montez Sweat, D-Walk, and Austin Booker are all safe. And then to me, I think Jacob Martin is safe as well, based on his contract and how he played in camp when he was healthy. But if he's not healthy to start the season, he could go on IR at least short term, and that would open up another roster spot. I think right now, Dominique Robinson is probably the favorite for the final spot. He's had a good camp. He's put on a ton of muscle, and he was a Ryan Poles draft pick. But Daniel Hardy is at least challenging him right now. Both of those players should get a lot of reps on Thursday night. And then finally, I have another correction here. I do really take pronouncing players' names seriously, and I actually spent multiple hours listening to different people say our rookie offensive tackle's name early in this year's pre-draft process. Most people did pronounce it Amagaji. However, somewhere I found an interview where our rookie offensive tackle was talking about it himself, and I'm 99% certain he said Omega G. But I can't find that interview today, so until I find it, I will default with everyone else and call him Amagaji. However, I do want to make a quick point here about the national media and the pronunciation of Guy's name. Just because an announcer or someone says it a certain way on TV, does not mean that is how the player or his family pronounces it. Take Terrell Owens, for example, Hall of Fame receiver, yet you will still hear people on TV call him Terrell Owens to this day. So I try to go above and beyond, and I'll find out exactly how he says it himself, but for now, I guess we'll go ahead and go with Amagaji. But stay tuned on that one. And then any other free agent news or rumors that pop up, I'll be here to discuss those as well. I am interested to hear what you guys think about this one. I do have a ton of content on the way. It's a late practice today, not kicking off until 1.45 this afternoon. I'll have the full breakdown out this evening. Remember to hit that like button for me, guys. Stay tuned. And until next time, bear down.